Hello friends, this video on Mathematical Reasoning Part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 9. Validated statement which are joined with AND, what we have to do? So for example, if we have statement P and Q. So to, to prove that P and Q statement is correct, we have to first prove that statement P is true. If the statement P is true, we have to prove that statement Q is true. Only if both the statement is true, then only we can say that statement P and Q is true. For example, if I say that 7 is a factor of 13 and let's suppose 40. So it is two statement actually. First statement is 7 is a factor of 13 this is P actually and Q is 7 is a factor of 40 so there are two statements P and Q first we had to prove that P is true so here we see P is false actually so if P is false the whole statement is false by default we did not even go to see Q correct we will take one example so if we say that 1 is a whole and natural law. So here also if you see that there are two statements. First is 1 is a whole number and the second statement is 1 is a natural number. Correct? So you want to prove the statement. First I have to prove P and then I have to prove Q. So if you see P is correct because yeah we know 1 is a natural number so it is a true statement and then Q yes Q is also true because 1 is also a natural, num natural number so both the statements are true hence we can prove that this statement is true in this case mean this statement is false so to prove that a statement P and Q is true we have to first prove that statement P is true now we will take validating statement so if we have statement in this form P or Q. Here, what we'll do? In this form, first we'll assume that P is false, right? We have to prove Q is true, and then second we have to assume Q is false, and we have to prove P is true. I'll show you an example. For example, we have say same statement: seven is factor of factor of 13 or 14 right so there are two cases so in case one we assume that there are two statements here actually p is 7 is factor of 13 and the second is 7 is factor of 14 so first we see we assume that p is false we assume this is false we try to prove q is true so here we know this is true and if this is true, that means statement is true. So we can say statement is true. Second case, if we assume Q is true, we try to prove this is true. If we assume this is false, we try to prove this is true, but we know that this is false actually. But still, the whole statement is true. So the funda here is, even if one of the value, one of the statement P, Q, R, anything, suppose we have P or Q or R, even if one of the statement is true, then the whole statement is true. That is, even if one of the component statement is true, then whole compound statement is true. So here you see one statement is true. That means the whole statement is true. So instead of going by this logic, you can very simply say that in case of compound statements with which has a lot of component statement joined by or, even if one component statement is true, the whole compound statement is true. If all the component statement are false, then only the compound statement is false. So in case we want to validate if and then statements, so we have to, if the statement is of this form, P is to Q, that is if P then Q, then we have two cases. We can do by two cases. One is the direct method. In direct method, we assume P is true and then we prove that Q is true. Second case is other way around, that is the contrapositive thing. We take the contrapositive of this, this becomes if not of Q implies not of P. That means 
will will assume that q is false and then we will prove that p is also false so for example we have the statement it is raining and then school closed right since it is if then statement to make our concept clear let it be an over condition here if it is sunday then also school closed so we have this condition this is p and this is q correct so first option is we assume p is true so we have assumed that it is raining we assume it is raining and then we have to prove that school is closed so if that is the case for example we have the case that it is raining and school closed this is true and school is closed this is true so we assume that raining is true and then we have to confirm that school is in the contra positive we have to assume that school that q is false that means we have to assume that school is not closed and then we have to prove that p is not p is also false for example you are talking about a day when the school is actually not closed then we have to assume that school is not closed and then we have to prove that the idea is not right or it is not correct so to validate if and then statement the first option is the direct method where you assume that p is true but it is raining on the sunday and then you prove that q must be true if you go for a contra positive method then you have to first assume that q is false that you have to assume that school is not closed if you assume school is not closed then you have to prove that it is not raining because if that is this is the statement we are taking right don't be confused sunday was just an condition i valid here just to show that it, it is dependent form if it is raining because in case of if and only if we have bi directional flow here is if and then it is single directional flow right so that, that's why we have no condition here if it is raining school is closed if it is not school school is not closed then it is not raining so we have two approach first approach direct method if p is true then q is true contra positive method if q is not true then p is also not true to validate if and only if we have to show that if p is true then q is true also we have to show that if q is true then p is true for example we have this example that there is a guy named adi okay there is a girl called adi and she eats only fruits only fruits only fruits fruits only so if you can see that this is two directional so if adi has eaten anything that means she has eaten also if if fruits are in the plate then adi will eat so it is two directional so this is p and this is q so if p is true that means adi has eaten then q is fruit food is food or if you say the food is fruit then adi has eaten or one more example mathematical example we take so this we are talking about four uh, dimension that is a polygon so if it is square correct then that means four side equal this is also example of if and only if. and this is p this is q so when if p is true that means if the object is square then q has to be true that means all the four sides are equal similarly if q is true that means four sides are equal for polygon with four side polygon with four side or we can say for rectangle or polygon with four side then it has to be square that means if q is true then p has to be true so we have to prove two way that is if p is q then true is uh, if p is true then q is true also if q is true and p is true if you prove both then only we can say that the statement is true with if and only if condition let's take some example of validating if and then because it is a little tricky so we have to prove the statements whether it is true or not so the condition is x and y are odd numbered then x y is also odd so this is p this is q that means if x and y are odd numbered 
then x y is odd. So what we have to do? We can prove directly by a straight method. That is, if p then q. We have to prove this. So first, if p is true, so let's take x is equal to five and y is equal to three. That means p is true. X and y are odd number. Then what is the value of q? Q says x y is odd. So x y is nothing but fifteen. Correct. And this is odd. So that means if we assume p is true, that is x equal to y and y is equal to three, any odd number, then what we get x y also odd number. Also we know that product of any two odd number is an odd number. Correct. So we can say that if x is equal to odd one and y is equal to odd two, we know that odd one into odd two is always x y is also. So if this is true, then this is also true. So this is what we have proved using direct method. Similarly, if you want to prove using contradictive method, so that means we have to prove not of p implies not of p, not of q implies not of p. So not of q q is that x y is even, correct? This is not of p q, and not of p is x and y are not odd. Correct. Now, if you see, if you see, if x y is even, for example, if we get x y is even, so we know that if the product is even, p and q, the product is even, so it can be scenario one scenario. This is odd. This is even. This is odd. This is even. Or both are even. Correct. Only three scenario. So in all these three scenario, we we have we can see that p x y are not odd. That is both x y and both p and q are not odd. Correct. So this statement is false in all these condition. So then if we are assuming by this method, when we are saying that x y is even, correct, then we can see that x and y also not odd. Thus we can prove the using. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.